Next students, let us understand a small concept called the budget factor or it's called the key factor. Budget factor, key factor, limiting factor, etc. These are certain names for a budget factor. Now, <clears throat> what do you do with the help of a budget? I can make the best allocation of resources, optimum allocation of resources. Now, sometimes I might have certain constraint conditions. Say there is a paucity of the machine capacity. I have only so much capacity. Maybe there are three kinds of products mm -hmm. that I can make. Which one do I make? So under constraint conditions, limitation of labor hours, limitation of the machine capacity, limitation of raw material, whatever. Right? <clears throat> so while the budget facilitates the optimum allocation of resources between functions, departments and even product lines, sometimes I have certain constraint conditions. How do I choose the product line to take? Do I make uh, one unit product A, do I make product B or do I make product C? How do I choose the product? I choose the product with the highest contribution per unit of constraint factor. Oh my God. What does this mean? Okay, first let us understand contribution. Contribution is selling price minus variable cost. Costs which vary with the number of units that I produce. Costs that vary with the number of units that we produce. <clears throat> Say for example, in order to make, make one unit, I need one pound of material. So, to make 10 units, I need 10 pounds of material. To make 20 units, I need 20 units of material. Those are, therefore, material costs are variable costs. Is it clear? So, contribution is the selling price less the summation of all variable costs. So, what is my problem now? While budget facilitates optimum allocation of resources between product lines, let me just take, uh, assume that I have product A product B and I have product C. Okay, three products. Now, this product gives me a contribution of $10 per unit. This gives me 8 per unit and maybe this gives me still less $7 per unit. Maybe this is what I get from the three products. Right? Now, which product will I make? A, B or C? While you might say that obviously A gives you the best uh, return, uh, best uh, contribution, contribution, I've taken a selling price less variable cost, maybe we should produce A. But suppose my machine hours are restricted. My machine hours are restricted. I have only 5000 machine hours in which to produce and I can choose any of the three. Which one do I choose? I choose the one which consumes less machine hours. But that again is slightly vague. So what is the best measure to take the product line A, B or C, whichever gives me the highest contribution per unit of constraint factor or per machine hour. So I will look at contribution per machine hour. Then I will rank the products. And based on the ranking, I will allot these limited machine hours. Key factor, budget factor. A very important, uh, important element, a very important concept for taking uh, decisions. We may do a little more of this when we move on to uh, performance management. That is the next section. But this is interesting. It is required for you to understand. So, do make me do quite a few problems to understand key factor theory. So what happens? When there is a limiting factor of production, right? One or more factors of production, maybe material, maybe labor hours, maybe machine hours, whatever. When they are limited, we will choose the product line with the highest contribution per unit of the constraint factor. Okay, let us understand this with an example. Okay, before that, 
of fixed and variable costs just to get an idea fixed costs remain fixed over different levels of activity for example if i'm paying a rent for the factory irrespective of whether i make no production i make only 10 units or i make 10000 units i will pay the same amount of rent <coughs> fixed cost per unit decreases as the number of units increase yes or no is that very clear fixed cost per unit decreases as the number of units increase the more number of units i uh, make the the, the 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 greater number of units it is spread against and the per unit cost will come down is this clear for example if i am paying dollars 10000 as rent no suppose i make only 10 units then how do i spread this it becomes 1000 dollars per unit yes or no but suppose i make 1000 units then what happens if i make 1k units what happens then it becomes dollar 10 per unit yes or no and if i make still more and i make 10000 units then of course it becomes dollar 1 per unit so as the number of units increase the fixed cost per unit decreases total cost remains the same total fixed cost remains the same remains the same does not change same but per unit cost will decrease as the number of units increase it will increase as the number of units decrease Variable cost varies in proportion to the output. So, variable raw material cost of $1 per unit, it will always be $1 per unit. If you make 1 unit, it is 1. If you make 10 units, the total variable cost will be 10. Per unit cost will be 1. So, variable cost per unit is fixed. Yes or no, students? Is it clear? As I said, suppose I need 1 pound of material for making 1 unit. I will need 100 pounds of material to make 100 units. It varies in proportion to the output. So, fixed cost in total remains fixed. Variable cost per unit remains fixed. Right? <clears throat> Variable cost totally will go on increasing as the number of units increase. But fixed cost per unit will decrease as the number of units increase. Like we said before, contribution is equal to selling price minus, okay, minus variable cost, less variable cost. 